Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرٌ مِنْ طِينٌ That I'm creating بَشَرًا مِنْ طِينٌ I'm creating a, a, a human being that's made of dirt. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Once I complete him, once I proportion him, and I breathe into him of my spirit, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Then you should fall uh, in prostration to him. Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنْ رُوحِ from my spirit, this is a means of venerating the soul. It's not literal. It's not that we, we, we have the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of us. It's the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the Kaaba Bayti, okay, or, or you know, my house, or the or, or Naqatullah, the she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Shams. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala venerates it uh, by saying, when I breathe into it, min ruhi, right, my spirit. But it's not obviously, again, the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't have any divine uh, nature inside of us. But the point here and what's to be taken from this, which is very powerful, is that the body was worthless without the soul. Okay, the angels were not commanded to prostrate, to make sajda, until the soul was breathed in. Which shows us that you know our internal being, our character, our morals, our akhlaq, our internal beauty is far more important than our external beauty. And we should be far more concerned with altering that which is on the inside and making that more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making that more beautiful than our outside because that's where our true value and our true worth is. It's even the case with our father Adam alayhi salam that the angels were not taught to show any means of veneration to the body of Adam alayhi salam until the soul was placed in. And that's why the Prophet says, لَيَدَعْنَا رِجَالٌ فَخْرَهُمْ بِأَقْوَامٍ That we should leave our boasting about our tribes and our boasting about where we come from. Let the people cease to boast about their ancestors. And he said وسلم, something very powerful. He said, you know, those people are merely فَحْمِ جَهَنَّمْ They're merely the fuel of hellfire. And they are worth less to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the beetle which, rule, which rolls manure with its nose. SubhanAllah, you know, saying that when you're just a body but you have a corrupt soul on the inside, your body at the end of the day doesn't mean anything here, nor will it mean anything in the grave because it's going to decompose, nor will it mean anything when you are raised on the day of judgment because it will merely be the fuel of hellfire. So it's important for us to better our internal being because that is what makes us beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what makes us beloved to the angels. That is what makes us honored even to other people. You know, even the angel doesn't come to you when you're in your mother's womb, in fact, until after four months when it brings the soul. And so subhanAllah, even if you were chemically to be able to remake the body and to, and, and to, and to recreate and clone, what are you going to do about the soul? You can't do anything about the soul. This is what makes us special as human beings. Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed the soul into Adam alayhi body, something very beautiful happened. As the soul was breathed into the body of Adam alayhi salam, he sneezed, atasa. And when he sneezed, he said, Alhamdulillah. And the Prophet said, when Adam alayhi salam said, Alhamdulillah, so the first words spoken by man were, all praises be to Allah, Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded and said, Yarhamuka Rabbuk, may your Lord have mercy on you. And so SubhanAllah, you can imagine how powerful that is, that the first exchange between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mankind is, Alhamdulillah, Yarhamuka Allah. That you know, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah says, May Allah have mercy on you, may your Lord have mercy on you. And that's why the Prophet said, in fact, that whenever you sneeze and you don't say Alhamdulillah, shaitan mocks you. Or when you sneeze and say Alhamdulillah and someone else doesn't say Yarhamukallah, may your Lord have mercy, mercy on you, shaitan mocks that person because shaitan saw that initial conversation and shaitan knows the implications of that conversation. And then as the soul continued to go into his body, Adam alayhi salam's eyes open and Adam alayhi salam sees Jannah. Now when Adam alayhi salam sees Jannah and he sees the palaces and he sees the trees and he sees the fruits and he sees all of this beauty around him, Adam alayhi salam actually tried to jump for those things before the soul reached his legs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a comment and he said, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we were created in haste. And that's in Surah Al-Anbiya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us as a hasty creation. But that hastiness did not stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from blessing us with His mercy. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that despite our imperfections and despite our being forgetful creatures, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still shows mercy to us.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content.